Tonight, no more masks, density limits or COVID check-ins set for New South Wales. And the member for Stewart officially voted in as South Australia's Deputy Premier. From our seven Spencer Gold Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamane begins now. Good evening. While COVID cases creep into South Australia, over the border in Broken Hill, almost all restrictions will soon be scrapped. Business is welcoming another step back towards normality ahead of the Christmas period. Signs of the time which soon will only be needed by a few. On December 15, or if New South Wales hits 95% double dose sooner, COVID rules will almost cease to exist. It's exciting to have everyone out and about just before Christmas, so it's something to look forward to. Density limits and COVID safe plans will no longer be required. Masks will only need to be worn by unvaccinated hospitality workers and in high risk settings. Great news for us in Broken Hill coming into summer. Um, again, I think we'll keep the masks on just to staff for a little bit longer and just see how all our staff feel about it. The unvaccinated will get equal freedoms, though ultimately businesses can still request to see certificates. And QR check-ins will only be required at high-risk venues, gyms, pubs and clubs and personal services like hairdressers. Whatever is easy for everyone and that ensures clients um, their safety and wellbeing and how they feel comfortable, so we don't mind doing that. Schools won't need to close for deep cleaning and close contacts will only need to test negative before returning to class, provided they follow up with rapid tests for the following week. Those changes come into effect on Monday. Meanwhile, Victoria last night joined New South Wales as the only jurisdictions which don't require a permit or form to enter. Three new cases recorded in Broken Hill today, one in Menindi, all are household contacts and were already in isolation. Two new cases were recorded in SA, both acquired interstate. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Local MP Dan Van Holst Pelican is now officially South Australia's new Deputy Premier following Vicky Chapman's resignation. With an investigation underway into the former Deputy's conduct around an infrastructure decision on Kangaroo Island, the Liberal Party is now looking to move forward with an upcoming election looming. The member for Stewart, now also the Deputy Premier. Dan Van Holst Pelican entering the party room ballot yesterday afternoon before emerging alongside the Premier to announce his new title. I think a pretty tough decision for a party room. It's not one uh, that is the, you know, the traditional uh, left-right. After originally appointed as the interim role on Tuesday, the Energy Minister was one of the two candidates flagged for the permanent role. Going up against Minister David Spears, Pelican says it was an amicable contest. I intend our Marshall Liberal Government to be re-elected. That is what's in the best interests of the people of South Australia. We intend to get on and do that job. Holding the seat of Stewart from 2010 and serving as the Energy and Mining Minister from 2018, this is his biggest political achievement to date. Said to have played an important role in securing funding for marine infrastructure redevelopment, renewable energy projects and community incentives across the region. With the Minister now looking to the future to secure his own seat of Stewart amid electoral lines being redrawn. And at the next election there's a very clear choice. South Australians can choose uh, the Liberal Party and Dan Van Holst Pelican and his commitment to a basketball stadium, or they can choose Labor and its commitment to use all of that money into health. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. South Australia's cruise sector has officially set sail today, with the first ship arriving on the Air Peninsula. The Coral Expedition vessel docking at Tumby Bay this morning, giving passengers a chance to explore the area. South Australian tourism back up and sailing. The first cruise ship arriving in Tumby Bay after a long layoff from travelling. It's exciting to be able to welcome visitors into town. Not the perfect weather, but there's no bad time of year to be here at Tumby Bay. The Coral Expedition's charter sets sail over a 10-day interstate adventure, hosting more than 70 passengers on board. At the moment there's 80 on board. The ship can carry up to 120 passengers, but with restrictions at the moment we're limited to under 100 passengers. This ship, one of three vessels visiting South Australia this summer, with the Coral Expedition set to bring in a $5 million boost to the state's economy. We're really 
thankful for SATC to be working closely with local communities and, and delivering these sort of outcomes and, and make it achievable for communities like us. Rough seas, not dampening spirits. Morning. It was rough and if you sat on the, on the starboard side you got wet from the spray, but <laughs> that's the way it is. Next stop for the cruise, Coffin Bay. Passengers getting the opportunity to explore more of the Air Peninsula. Yeah, with the borders moving to open up, we're getting more people. It's surprising how willing and committed the guests have been to getting themselves to the vessel. Travellers encouraging others to get out and discover more of the region. Get out there and have a look at the country. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. An investigation has begun after police believe a stolen identity was used to purchase telecommunication services. On Tuesday, a Port Lincoln man reported a letter he received from a telecommunications company stating he had an overdue account. The man claims he does not have an account with the company. Police now urging the public to remain vigilant for online scams and phone calls. Broken Hill Spring downpour looks to have come to an end, but certainly went out with a bang. Around 20 millimetres of rain recorded in just over two hours last night, causing flash flooding in the usual areas around town. Twice the average rainfall for November has been recorded in just the last three days. The official figure is 41.2 mils during that period. A mild and cloudy weekend is ahead. We'll have the full details later in the bulletin. Still to come tonight, new data reveals the Spencer Golf electorate as one of the most disadvantaged in Australia and Broken Hill Police cracks down on domestic violence. Welcome back. A South Australian independent senator is calling for more to be done in grey, following a new report showing the area is one of the most disadvantaged federal electorates in the country. However, the local member says plenty of projects are happening. It's a call to ensure quality of life is improved for those living in the Upper Spencer Gulf. The recent dropping of the edge report, finding many towns in our region are some of the most disadvantaged in the state. It's a disturbing report. There's a whole range of different categories uh, that the report deals with, uh, ranging from things like uh, internet access, uh, low incomes, with some cities in our region showing persistent disadvantage in the past few years. Uh, it's a safe Liberal seat and safe seats don't get much attention. The Senator calling for more to be done in the electorate of Grey, falling behind across many key areas. The Federal Member, however, saying effort is going into plenty of things being done in his electorate. He made accusations about me about uh, just coasting along. I invite him to try and keep up. Also saying, due to the size of the area, it's not surprising services are not at the level of city areas. We keep ploughing resource into it. But now, um, we, of course, uh, we are spending more than a billion dollars on roads in grey, and I'm very proud about that result. A South Australian social advocacy group saying the region needs more focus by parliamentarians who are based outside the cities. It's time for our regional representatives, our, our MPs in the federal and the state parliament, to be standing up for their region. Mark Zita, 7 Spencer Golf News. Domestic violence offenders are being put on notice, with Broken Hill Police launching another blitz on high-risk offenders. It's the second time in as many months officers have cracked down on apprehended domestic violence orders. Our reporter Lachlan Itter has the story. Police say the 16-day operation is a proactive way to prevent offenders from committing further acts of violence. It's a crime, it's a serious crime. Now it ranges in severity of penalties but regardless of whether it's a threat or a, an assault or something more serious, it's a crime. Launching yesterday, the 16 Days of Activism campaign aligns with World Human Rights Day and wraps up on International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. So we'll be focusing our, our efforts around AVOs and ensuring those court orders are complied with, but also targeting our recidivist offenders. Local police saying much of their time is spent on DV-related jobs. Domestic violence is the biggest risk that we have in the community in terms of crime. It's the most prevalent and it's also the one with the most emotional, physical and financial and, and other factors that, that involve. So far this year, more than 17,000 compliance checks have been conducted across the Western region. And what we want to do 
is assist those offenders, certainly with uh, directions around uh, programs and their recidivism and also seeking assistance that victims know how to reach out for help. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, you can call 1800 RESPECT for confidential support and counselling. A remembrance service for those who have died from the effects of asbestos exposure was held in Wyala this morning. It serves as a timely reminder about the long-lasting effects of asbestosis, which severely impacts the lungs. A sombre occasion to remember those who have lost their lives to asbestos exposure. The Wyala Asbestos Victims Association holding its annual memorial service at the Mount Laura Homestead. Relatives of victims in attendance. It doesn't matter how many years it's been since their loss, they still seem to support us, they still seem to feel that loss. Wyala Support Group ensuring those who were exposed to the deadly substance get the care they need. The city having a history with asbestos when the shipbuilding yards were open. Many workers at the time getting severe symptoms like asbestosis and lung cancer. We've learnt a lot through these people. I have a husband that's got it. Um, and I'm there to help the community the best way I can, uh, comfort the people. The city's community leaders and politicians also in attendance to remember locals who have died from asbestos exposure. Today is important to remember that and to ensure that something like this never happens again. Listen to the science and act on it. The association is looking for volunteers to help care for survivors. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us after the break. Aboriginal students celebrate graduating school in Port Augusta. And the South Australian Sheep Fund calls for more projects. Hello again. The 2021 Education Awards were held in Port Augusta last night to acknowledge students committing to their schooling. With medals presented, a free barbecue and a concert, the event was a true celebration to cap off the year. Celebrating important first steps in a journey to excellence. Port Augusta's Connected Beginnings team hosting a family-friendly event to acknowledge school students and their hard work this year. Opportunity to present awards to uh, Aboriginal students that are in primary and uh, up into PASS, into the iSchool. The event seeing 35 Aboriginal students receive awards for their high quality work and commitment. It's our second um, uh, evening when we've run uh, an awards night and we're just so proud of all the schools and uh, thank the principals from each of the schools and the education department. Organisers saying the students' achievements throughout this coronavirus disrupted school year deserve to be celebrated. With many Year 12 students not only passing classes but scoring high enough to look into tertiary education. We need to uh, encourage our younger generation to do education. Grab hold of everything you've got while you're young. Run with the people that know what to do and lean and ask as many questions as you possibly can and you'll succeed. It's a great opportunity to acknowledge and to make aware that um, young children and older children can set some pathways and dreams for their lives. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. An Indigenous artist from Gladstone has unveiled her mural at a Port Perry kindergarten in front of children and parents. The paintings were designed in respect of Aboriginal culture, teaching young people how to connect with the traditional owners of the land. It's a painting nearly two terms in the making. This local artist turning an entire wall here at the Risdon Park South Kindergarten into a mural. Representing many stories through the lenses of our First Nations people, so the large patches of the painting actually represent the patches of a carpet snake, so it is actually the carpet snake travelling through the kindergarten. The paintings showing different Nukunu icons, including a story of the children coming together, the fishing industry and the native animals that freely roam the land. It's encompassing all of those cultural aspects from lands, animals to people, encompassing them all as one. The children also happy to get involved by dipping their hands in paint marking the wall in a symbol of unity. And as you can see from the colours as well, we've incorporated the three flags of Australia. Uh, we've got the Torres Strait Islander flag, the Aboriginal flag and the Australian flag with all of the colours as well. So that was a great way of inclusing, you know, including those as well. 
Judith also connecting with the children by teaching Indigenous songs and how to speak her language. I would definitely like to um, keep, keep connected with Judy. Uh, it might be possible next year that she can um, work with us again, which would be fantastic. Her paintings aiming to inspire the many generations to come. Christian Komenos, 7 Spencer Golf News. The South Australian Sheep Industry Fund is on the lookout for projects for the 2022-23 funding year. The board encouraging farmers to get in touch with the Livestock SA Board before December 15. The Sheep Fund is currently contributing to the dog fence rebuild, with 12 cents from every sheep sold going towards the project. The board is looking forward to constructive projects put forward. Stay with us after the break. Our experts will share their cricket tips for weekend matches. And we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. Organisers of the St Pat's races are hoping next year's event will be bigger than ever and kickstart two months of major events in Broken Hill. The 2022 event will return to an eight-race program with a 2,000-person cap expected to be dropped. New food and entertainment offerings are also under consideration to attract younger racegoers. Because the times change so much and so rapidly, particularly over the last 18 months, we as a club have to reinvent ourselves. We have to look at what we do. Tickets will go on sale within the next few weeks. The cricket season is well into full swing. Let's hear from our experts with their tips for matches over the weekend. Barra District Cricket continues this week with uh, 40 over games, that's weather permitting, at the Alma Oval on uh, Saturday. Uh, West take on Central, this will be the game of the round. Uh, both sides are in very good form at the moment. I think maybe West may uh, hold sway slightly here because they're a uh, better bowling attack. The game at the Alma on Sunday, North take on South, South struggling at the moment and I think uh, North should have a comfortable win in this game. Yeah, g'day and welcome to uh, this week's round of cricket tips for Port Augusta. This week we see uh, Port Augusta take on Wyla at Etza. Uh, the Port Augusta side will be led by Alex Osking. Should be a good match. The associations are using this as a, um, an indigenous focus, a cricket welcome to country, that sort of stuff. Um, it should be a great match. I'm going to tip Port Augusta because it, 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 the match is going to be played here in Port Augusta. So there's my tip, Port Augusta to beat Wyala. Hello and welcome to Port Pirie Cricket. Club Cricket takes a back seat this weekend to allow for the combined weekend. Port Pirie will put a strong side together and will take on Roxby at Corner on Saturday. The winner of that game will progress to Sunday where they'll take on either the winner out of Port Augusta or Wyla. Expecting a big weekend of cricket and good luck to the Pirie boys. Welcome to another week of Port Lincoln Cricket Tips. Huge game this weekend out on Centenary Oval. First game for the year on turf. We'll see Charlton and Southern Air. Charlton coming off a huge win last week against Tasmans. I think they'll be uh, a little bit too strong in this game and get over the line uh, in what should be a good game of cricket. Uh, in the next game is Waybacks and Todd River at uh, Ravendale Oval. Todd River looking for their first win of the year. Waybacks uh, went down quite convincingly to Southern Air last week, but I reckon they'll bounce back and get the win here. Thanks for listening to the Port Lincoln Cricket Tips. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. Thanks, Ruby, and good evening, everyone. Well, conditions are starting to clear up and we are set to get a taste of summer over the weekend. About time, I say. But let's first take a look at today's conditions. From 3pm, Port Augusta was partly cloudy in 21, Port Lincoln cloudy in 18 degrees and Port Puri was 22. Looking further out across the region, our Wyler and Clare were 19, Broken Hill and Adelaide were both 20, Woodner was 21, Kadena and Cleve were both 18, mostly sunny in Cooper Pedy and a top of 24 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, widespread cloud over South Australia with a moisture laden air mass is bringing a few showers, mainly in the coastal areas. Clear elsewhere across the state with a drier air mass. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. South to southeasterly winds 20 to 30 knots, seas 1 to 1.5 metres to 2.5 metres, and south to southwesterly swell 1 to 1.5 metres. And a short time ago, a marine wind warning was current for South Australia. Port Lincoln will be partly cloudy 
and 20 degrees tomorrow, Cleve a degree warmer and Woodna is set to reach a high of 25. While it will be mostly sunny and 23, Port Augusta and Kadena will both reach a high of 25 degrees. Mostly sunny in Port Piri with 26, Clare will be sunny and 23 and Broken Hill partly cloudy with 22 degrees. Taking a look at Sunday now, it's looking sunny in most parts. Port Augusta and Woodna will both be sunny, both set to reach 28 degrees. Mostly sunny in Port Lincoln with 21, Broken Hill are partly cloudy and 24 degrees. Taking a look further into next week now and sunny in Port Pirie with 30 degrees on Monday. Port Augusta mostly sunny and 31, while at Kadena and Adelaide to reach 28. A look at Tuesday, it will be partly cloudy across the state and over the border, Broken Hill will be sunny and 31 degrees. So not looking too bad there at all. And that's all the weather for me for tonight. Have a lovely weekend. It's back to you, Ruby. Great. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's all local news this Friday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. John Hunt and the team will be back on Monday. Good night.